Hi, I'm Rody for The Developer Show, and this is your weekly update on the coolest developer news from Google. Now that Firefox 114 is stable, there's some new exciting features coming to the web platform. Starting with the Web Transport API, this is a modern update to the WebSockets, providing multiple streams, unidirectional streams, and out-of-order delivery. Next, the SVG element can now support the cross-origin attribute and will work the same way as the HTML attribute and applies to all the image tags in the element. Some interesting beta releases include the animation composition property with the new array properties in Firefox 115. And Safari 17 adds web apps and lots of CSS features like container style and font face adjust. On the Chrome side for the 115 release, we now have scroll-driven animations and a series of technologies from the privacy sandbox, such as frame fences that allow for embedded content with limits to the communication, including the Topics API that allows for interest-based advertising without tracking the sites a user visits, and plenty more. You can learn more on the web.dev blog and check out the latest video on what's new in Chrome. Rust only reached 1.0 in 2015, which makes it a relatively new language with a lot to offer and discover in terms of performance and memory safety guarantees. At Google, we have been seeing an increase in Rust adoption, and pulling from over a 1,000 Google developers, we can address some rumors about Rust head on. Rumor number one, Rust takes more than six months to learn, which is debunked. Based on our studies, more than two-thirds of respondents are confident in contributing to a Rust code base within two months. Rumor number two, the Rust compiler is not as fast as people would like it to be, which is confirmed by the developers. Only about 40% of the respondents are finding the speed acceptable. Rumor number three is unsafe code and interop are always the biggest challenges, which is debunked. The top three challenges include macros, ownership and borrowing, and async programming. Rumor number four is about Rust's amazing compiler messages, which is confirmed. And rumor number five is that Rust's code is high quality, which is also confirmed. 77% of developers were satisfied with the quality of the Rust code, and more than half say that the code is incredibly easy to review. Stay tuned over the next year for another update and check out the Google Open Source blog for more info. Heading over to Go, we can talk about the exciting announcement of Go Volncheck, which is a command line tool to check vulnerabilities in your code bases and binaries. There is a great video from Google I.O. this year you can watch titled Build More Secure Apps with Go and Google. The tool is powered by the Go Vulnerability Database, and you can learn more at vuln.go.dev. Finally, we can head over to Android to talk about some policy updates. There's a new policy update, which allows new ways to transact with blockchain-based digital content with apps and games on Google Play. From reimagining traditional games with user-owned content to boosting user loyalty through unique NFT rewards, we're excited to see creative in-app experiences flourish and help developers expand their businesses. Organizations signing up for Google Play now require a DUNS number. This is a unique nine-digit identifier that is widely used to verify businesses. On your App Store's listing, the Contact Details section is now being renamed to App Support and now includes a new section called About the Developer. And finally, there are new expanded developer verification requirements that will help users make confident, informed choices on what to download. You can learn more on the Android Developers blog. To learn more about all these week's stories, make sure to check the description box below for all the links. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, and stay safe. I'm Rody for The Developer Show. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.